Hello everyone, we are Project Hummingbird from St. Louis University. In this video, we will discuss the progress we've made towards developing our fully autonomous VTOL aircraft. Here we have our concept of operations. The gas engine aircraft will be manually started by the operator and remain in idle. The vertical motor arms will be deployed and ready for takeoff. Once the mission has been started to the program Q ground control, our vehicle will take off vertically and ascend until reaching the desired altitude. Once target altitude is reached, our vehicle will morph into horizontal flight and travel to our search area. At any given time, our aircraft may be given a command to loiter in a designated area. This will be accomplished by putting our aircraft into a constant bank angle turn to maintain our position within the designated area. Once the loiter is complete, we can continue our mission. When the mission is complete, the aircraft will return to the landing location and transition back into the hover configuration. The aircraft will then descend and land. The engine will be stopped and the plane can now be recovered. Our initial morphing mechanism is displayed here. This was our original design that has been changed due to a variety of factors. The old design had an increased weight, drag, and in-flight risk of failure. Our new morphing mech utilizes four different arms, each with a set of coaxial rotors. Each arm is controlled by a servo capable of morphing our arms in all flight conditions. The new morphing mechanism has reduced each of the risks that were previously stated. Here is a high level view of our plane's geometry. Our wingspan is 9 feet with a 23 inch cord. The tail features two verticals of 1 foot each, supporting a 4 foot horizontal stabilizer. Both have a 1 foot cord. The total length of the plane is 8 feet, and our center of gravity is located 31 inches from the nose. Our aerodynamic center is 36 inches from the nose, giving us a static margin of 21%. The structures in our aircraft consist of a series of bulkheads made of quarter inch plywood boards. We have four lithium polymer batteries highlighted in yellow located in the nose of our aircraft. Our payload is blue and located just behind our batteries. A hatch will allow us access to the batteries and payload for easy recovery. This payload can be easily loaded and unloaded with any materials deemed necessary for the mission. In red, we have our fuel tank. This is located under our center of gravity for stability purposes. Our wings are made of a combination of several different materials designed to maximize both manufacturability and strength. We start with a large block of foam board installation sheathing and use a hot wire foam cutter to cut our airfoils. This foam cutter is installed with a 3-axis G-code based software driven by DXF type files. Once the wing and spar holes are cut out of the foam, we trim our trailing edge and replace it with a thick piece of balsa wood which is then sanded to conform to our airfoils. With this finished, we move on to applying a fiberglass and epoxy coating to give the wings additional strength. Afterwards, the control surfaces are measured, cut, and reinstalled using hidden hinges and high strength medical tape. Finally, servo holes are cut, servo mounts installed, and servos affixed. Things are then mounted to the spars and installed in the plane. 3D printed parts are used in a few locations on our aircraft. This includes custom made vertical motor mounts as well as a T-piece connector used to mount our vertical motor arms to our control servos. To manufacture our fuselage, we used a custom mold made of MDF board which was CNC'd to get our desired shape. A four layer fiberglass layup is then performed to form one half of our fuselage. A carbon fiber and fiberglass layup is used to make hatches for different sections of our aircraft which access will be regularly needed. This is the Aurora 9X handheld transmitter and the high-tech receiver. They will serve as a backup control and will allow a pilot to manually fly the aircraft if the autopilot should be disengaged for any reason. The two lens device is the LiDAR light rangefinder, which will be used to make the autonomous vertical landings more accurate and smooth by relaying data about the aircraft distance to the ground during landing. Next up is our RTK GPS module and antenna attached to the Pixhawk flight controller, with the primary GPS module also connected. 
This is the backbone of the system, the long range simulation radio situated next to the first person video system. The FPV system consists of an on screen display board, a video transmitter, and an FPV camera. Here we have one of the avionics batteries, a 3S LiPo with a capacity of 2700 mAh. The batteries will be plugged into the Holybro power distribution board, which is used to step down the voltage the Pixhawk receives from 12 volts to 5 volts necessary to power it. Finally, we have a bird's eye view of the Pixhawk, which will be autonomously controlling the plane. Q Ground Control QGC, will be the primary software used in our ground station. Seen here opening from a Linux terminal, Q Ground Control can be used to set up various settings on our aircraft by interfacing with the Pixhawk. A few of the sensors that can be configured include the compass, gyroscope, accelerometer, and airframe. In our case, a fixed wing octoplane airframe. Also within these settings, firmware updates can be performed for the Pixhawk and telemetry radios. The selective waypoint function within Q Ground Control will be one of the most important functions within QGC as it allows for us to set up different waypoints for the aircraft to fly to in between, giving boundaries and general path for autonomous flight. Additionally, this will provide important information such as total plane distance and range of the flight. An example of some of the benefits of using QGC include the waypoint mission, fence, and rally functions. The mission function will allow for an input to be set for the initial takeoff altitude for our VTOL. The fence function allows us to set boundaries for the flight, so that the aircraft will not leave a designated airspace. The rally function allows for an alternate landing positions that are deemed safe in case of a loss of power or change to mission. Here we can see the QGC plan function. This function can be used for takeoff and landing, and can also be used for setting waypoints within the flight path. The log download screen will be important for our flight tests. It will give us the ability to download telemetry, sensor information, power information, as well as any other data logs that were collected during the flight. The application settings in QGC are important for setting the units of measurement, and for notifications that can be sent to the aircraft during flight such as lower battery readings and saving telemetry logs. The application settings can also be used for determining which devices to connect to during pre-flight setup. The parameters for the RTK GPS can also be configured in QGC. Lastly, some of the values can be stored as widgets, which can be used to show some of the statistics from the flight. An example of some of the widgets that can be displayed include parameters such as airspeed or distance from ground station. These parameters will be useful to park service workers interpreting the data collected from the drone. Here we have a ground test ensuring full functionality of our control surfaces. Ailerons are located at the end of our wings, allowing for greater control and easier manufacturing. Both vertical stabilizers have a rudder running the whole span, and horizontal stabilizer has its elevator in the center. Similar to the main wings, the tail is designed in this way to maximize controllability while maintaining manufacturability. Here we show a preliminary wiring setup of our vertical propulsion system. We have a power distribution board capable of sustaining up to 500 amps of continuous current. There are two PDBs connected to all eight electronic speed controllers. Our batteries are connected directly to our PDBs. 
Here we have a demonstration of the morphing mechanism for two of our vertical motor arms. The Human Life Detection System uses a machine learning neural network to identify people in thermal images. The network was trained by taking a pre-trained TensorFlow model and retraining it with thermal images collected by the Project Hummingbird team. These photos were labeled and ran through the network. Since the network has been trained on the thermal images, we are in the process of converting our trained model into a TensorFlow light model. This type of model is able to run on the Raspberry Pi that will be on our aircraft. As a proof of concept, a pre-trained model has been downloaded and is currently being run on the Pi. This is what is currently being shown. Since this model hasn't trained on the thermal images, the model that we trained will have even greater accuracy. This method, however, is not running at the desired speed. However, solution is already being worked on. We are using the Intel Neural Compute Stick 2 as a hardware accelerator. However, we need to convert our model once again in order to be compatible with the Compute Stick. This will allow us to analyze the live video feed from the thermal camera. After the completion of the acceleration process, the model that we have trained will be converted and run on the Raspberry Pi. We used advanced aircraft analysis to determine the aircraft flight dynamic characteristics. We found that the plane is stable in flight behavior. This gives us the confidence to move to the flight testing phase. Here are the plots of dynamics of the aircraft under the condition of full fuel and full payload. 